Welcome to Harrisdale Pavilion for this round six matchup in the FMG Championship grade between Arx Rugby Club and the Bunbury Barbarians. My name is Jason Marable and thank you for joining me on what you can see is an absolutely perfect day for rugby here. Not a cloud in the sky, no wind to speak of and a dry deck. And we're very happy to be bringing you for the first time in 2023 on the Rugby WA YouTube channel action from the championship division so Arx is the home club today as we see the opposition Bunbury start to run out and we'll take you through the starting lineups first of all Arx playing at the loose head position but wearing number three is Edward Morton the hooker position Cody Chapman Manuel at the tight head wearing number one Anthony Russell in the second rows we've got Rowan Keel and number five, Sanele Vayagafa. In the back row, number six, Leighton Toby. Wearing number eight, but playing as open side is Troy Laurent. Wearing number 26 and playing the eight position is Justin Grace. Number nine, Caleb Tamata. Fly half, Blair Gibbons. And playing on the left wing, wearing number 19, the man known as Nooks. And the captain, wearing number 12, is Caleb Kapa'a. Number 13, Maxwell Hall, and then the brothers at the right wing and fullback position. 14 and 15, we've got Cody Davis and Sean Davis. Now to bring you the Bunbury Barbarians lineup. Playing number one is Tom Parr at the hooker and captain, and captain for the last five years is Steve Hemmer. At the tight head position is Paolo Nuu. Number four is Josefa Vurabedi. Number five is Vula Ono. Number six, Raffaele. Number seven, the man known as Botta. And number eight, Cave Kinney. Number nine, Villa Dai. Number 10, Ratatuki. And number 11, it is Sanga Niavalu. Number 12, Aiden Hanna. Number 13, Isaac Harmer. He's been only playing rugby for the last three years, we've been told. Number 14, Sorova, and at the fullback position, Tua Vuna, wearing number 23. And refereeing today's match, pretty experienced referee in Peter Mostert. So, absolutely picturesque day for rugby here at Harrisdale. Going to be Blair Coach. Gibbons to get us underway. Arx, the team in the white and red hoops. Who's on your flag? From the right to left on your screen, Bunbury Barbarians in the black and white. We're receiving the kickoff. Yeah, well, they've got theirs ready here, so we just need a flag on that side. And referee Peter Mossa just doing a little bit of pre-game admin here, getting uh, getting his ARs um, sorted, so he's come, got come across. To run, run the touch for him. There we go, somebody's been roped into the job now, so we're just about ready to get things underway. And referee Peter Mossad and Blair Gibbon gets us underway. And the drop kick out there to the Barbarians, taking it inside their 22. And already a, a little pop pass there and a chip and chase. With the Arcs winger grabbing that one. They'll look to spread it wide and have a little bit of a run. But pass doesn't really go to anyone in particular. But Blair Gibbons cleans up and Arcs have it just inside their own half as they settle things down a little bit now. Little, little pick and go there by Troy Laurent. He's, he's going to be uh, held up here potentially, but they've managed to wrestle it to the ground and, and save possession there. Caleb Tamada flicking the ball wide now to Gibbon. Big step here by the man that's Huta. He's just some really good contact there by Villa Dai by the bump. 
Oh, the Barbarians just pushing him back there. Two big fellas uh, running at each other. It's great to watch. And Rowan Keel takes it up for Bunbury. They've only managed to chew off a, a metre or two into their attacking half, but they'll go wide and a good little step there. Tackle by Vura Berry. And they're just chipping off and Peter, Peter Mossa tells Arx, come on, let's go. And geez, a, a flat pass there. But uh, Arx get away with it, and Bunbury looks to have turned it over here. Some great work there by uh, Nu'u, and Bunbury will sling it wide now here. With the big boys, Tom Parr, taking it up, and uh, form now, and the Barbarians will have a crack. And Villaday with a great pass there to the inside centre. And we might have an Arx player in a bit of trouble there. Looks to be Caleb Tamata was got in the way of a barnstorming barbarian and looks to be uh, a little shaken up from that one. So while we have a, a stoppage in play here, let's uh, give you a bit of a recap of how things are shaping up this season in the championships. So Arcs Rugby Club. This is a bit of a rebuild season for them. Uh, they were in the Premier grade last season, but transitional year for them. And that's probably reflected on their results so far. So uh, the two wins, two losses, and find themselves in sixth position on the championship ladder, but they're only four points off second spot. So with uh, two wins, one against Rockingham in round two, and then a win against Curtin in round three. Round four, they... Had a bit of a tough one against uh, the Mandra Pirates at Meadow Springs. And, um, but coming off that, they've had the bye week. So an opportunity to rest the bodies and get back to their structures and come up with a game plan for the opposition who come in as red-hot favourites and in first place, four games played, four wins. They have been the trendsetters of the competition so far, the Bunbury Barbarians. Strong team, some big wins early, and they look to be the team to beat this year in this grade. So obviously every precaution being taken here with the injured arcs player, just making sure that any serious injury is taken care of and but hopefully he's okay and we'll see him back on the rugby field soon. So the Bunbury Barbarians team have a heavily influenced team of Pacific Island Nation players who have found a, a real home at... Um, Legendant in Australia, their home ground of the Barbarians. They heavily uh, influenced by Pacific Island Nation players, many of them over on the Palms visa and working in the various industries around the, the Bunbury area and absolutely love to have their culture contributed to our, uh, our competition here. Bringing that, uh, I was actually lucky enough to be down in February. They hosted the Bunbury summer sevens event um, with many Pacific and Island sevens nations teams playing there as well as other teams from the championship such as Perth Irish and uh, Curtin University were represented but I can tell you that the the carver was flowing and the food was absolutely delicious and it was a fantastic day of sevens rugby and I've got to tell you that the weather wasn't too far off what it is today a little bit cooler, but today that is. But um, yeah, it was a great day, and they'll be hosting that day again next year in February. So if you're you're into your sevens rugby and want to get a couple of couple of fellas together or a couple of ladies, head on down there. Mark that in your calendar in February and um, head on down.
obviously never like to see players uh, injured, but the uh, ARCs support and medical team will take every precaution with the spinal board. As I said, we don't, we don't take any risks to make sure that the player is okay and, and needs to be taken care of. So for those who don't know, ARCs Rugby Club, the ARCs stands for Armidale, Rolly Stone, Kelmscott Suburbs. But they actually play out of this wonderful facility here in Harrisdale. And um, great community club and a thriving juniors program. If you come down here on a Saturday morning, you'll see multiple fields with juniors running around. And both boys and girls, I've got a couple of young ladies in the Rugby WA State Academy program. We'll be looking to go away and tour interstate in July when they take part in the Southern States Championships. So great community club, great juniors, and um, I'm sure they'll be looking to build with their director of rugby and head coach, Ben Ockerden, over the coming seasons and you know maybe have a tilt at coming back into the Premier grade and building through the multiple teams. And it, it starts here, starts now in 2023 for them. the player is being helped off the field now great as always uh, being clapped off by the opposition and supporters here and Harris Allen, we, we hope he makes a speedy recovery so referee Mossad says we'll, we'll have a scrum and to get things underway and, and get back to the rugby So, first chance to have a look at the scrum today. Both front rows will be looking to put down a marker and um, get a bit of an ascendancy at set piece and, and sort of feel each other out there. And see the Barbarians with the, the feed and looks pretty stable. Neither side going well. So, good defensive scrum. Good hands there by the... The number 10 from Barbarians, but not so much from uh, Isaac Harmer just knocking that one on and Arcs have recycled the ball. They'll have a scrum advantage here. And they've won themselves a penalty advantage here. So they can play with house money and they give it to the big boys to rumble up there. No advantage. Offside at the rack. Ball was, in the Ball was still under the player's feet in the rack. Well, you heard that from the referee there. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward call. The, the ball hadn't come out the back of the ruck, so um, a few of the Bunbury Barbarian players just jumping the gun a little bit there. And Arcs will kick for touch and we'll get a look at the first line out of the game. Chapman Manual to, to throw this Hold one in. Hold the gap for us, please. And it goes to the back and just overthrown there, but they might have cleaned it up a little bit here. Arch has a great heads up play at the back of the line to recycle possession after the overthrow. And it's a pick and go here. So they look to just soften up that defense around the rock. But they've not cleaned out effectively and uh, Keeping away possession there, the penalty holding on. And Ratuki will kick for touch here and the Barbarians can have a crack at the line out. And that one finds touch. 
10 metres into the Barbarians attacking the half. He's well. Steve Harmer, the captain. Three up to throw this one in. As I said, been captain for five years. Hold the gaps, hold the gaps! It's a full line out, both teams. They go to the front. Up, 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 up. Get off to Villa Day and Ratuki. And that's a great pass out to, to Ivani. And they've got some space here through the winger and a great sidestep there by Soroba. Soroba but he's been taken into touch. I not. I want to see more of that from the Barbarians. A wide, expansive play and chipped off a good 25 metres there. And looked good through the hands but just ran out a bit of space and Arcs went into touch but nice footwork you can see they're definitely dangerous in the backs and like to play that way so Arcs at the second time of asking get the line out right and set up them all uh, it's not really going anywhere and trumble away a little bit here as it reformed and And Hannah, fly half. Actually, a pretty good touch finder there. That's a, a really decent exit by Arx, you know, set up the ball nicely. And, and referee's brought it back here. He's actually said that um, it was taken back into the 22, so. Uh, Take that one back. Everything looked to be really good, but the, the rolling mall had trundled past that 22, so taken back. A real shame for Arcs there, because apart from that, it was a pretty good exit, well structured, but Bunbury will have a chance now, and that's Guruberry at the front, brings that one down. They set up the rolling mall. And trundling on a little bit here, but it's brought down, and they have penalty advantage. The Barbarians brought down illegally by the Arcs team, so. Playing with house money, and it's a little bit of a snipe off the ruck there by Nu'u. And he chips off a metre or two and sets himself up nicely for the Barbarians here. Inside the 22 with a penalty advantage. What can they do? The hooker, Hammer, takes it, moves it forward. And a fair bit to the breakdown. It's all a little bit... Arcs have turned it over, but not legally, so referee Mostart will say, Bummery, you have the ball. Penalty to come. Let's see what they do here. I think it was no clear release there, the signal from the referee, and looks like the Barbarians are going to say, there's no wind to speak of. Beautiful day. Let's, uh, let's have a shot at goal and see if we can put three points on the board. You're away from home, always a good idea to keep the scoreboard ticking over. So we'll have a look at the boot of Rotuki. It's a um, challenging kick. He, he's pretty much on the five metre line. On the left hand side of the field. So challenging kick, but see how he does. And he's missed that one to the left. there, the, the Barbarians, I thought it was a penalty, but it actually scored. So that was a conversion, and didn't actually see the score of that one, so Barbarians lead this one 5-0.
And the no, play no, there no. to Avuna for Arx. Rumbling Watch forward, shrugging a few off, feet. and he's won his team an advantage as well for the Barbarians going off their feet. Playing advantage, high! Gibbons. Calling for it. They still got advantage here, according to referee Mostart. And just we'll go back for the penalty advantage. And Marks have got a shot inside their 22. Let's see what they do. So Bunbury five, Arks nil. Arcs <laughs> kick for touch and 17 minutes into the the first half, including that stoppage. But Arcs have the line out, looks to be about 10 metres out. And Chapman Manuel with the throw. What do they do here? The rolling mole looked good on their exit. Do they go to that again? It's brought down by Viagafa and sheared off and they set them all up. Gibbons inside to inside runner there for the Arcs takes it up they're in front of their post about 10 metres out Gibbons again throws it out to Troy Laurent the Barbarians defence holding strong now and Gibbons puts in a little grubber kick but it rebounds off a Barbarians player and, and then the, the number two Steve Hemmer grubbers that one out into touch and referee says that it did bounce before going out so not out of bounds on the full and yeah, arcs unfortunately don't come away with anything after a good line out and a couple of little uh one out runners around the ruck but the little grubber didn't didn't pay off but they bring down this line out through lauren and Big fella, that's Richard Stewart. Coming on there. Running up. Gibbons. Inside to Sean Davis, one of the brothers. A big, strong run there. So they've got some big, strong ball carriers, Ark. So they just need to get, get them with the ball in hand. And advantage. It's Edward Morton taking the ball up, and he's. So there's knock on there, but there's no advantage. He's taking the match. Lost the handle, but. Sorry, that was uh, Rowan Keel. Lost the handle there, but Arks had a penalty advantage for the Bunbury Barbarians player tackling a player off the ball. So, Arks will uh, have another crack at the line out. off the inside of the boot that one and probably doesn't uh, chew off the meters that uh, Maxwell Hall would have been hoping for but Marks will go to the line out here and it's tapped back and actually cleaned up by the Bunbury Barbarians player Fall up, on up but uh, he knocks it on pretty much straight away so Arx will have a the crack about 25 metres out and oh, a bit of a stand up there. Uh, Kevin Kinney was put down trying to make the tackle on the Arcs player. That was Leighton Toby, I think it was, put him down there and some strong runners, strong contact, but still yet to bend the Barbarians line and must start. Gibbons has a little bit of a snipe on the outside shoulder, just about. Gets his shoulders through the line, but they're playing with house money here. Arcs, they've got a penalty advantage, so... Sorry. Gibbons gives it to Russell. Russell, a couple of big strong runs today, and he... That one's no different. Okay. No advantage. Referee Mostert says... Number seven. You've had a couple of cracks. Let's go back for that penalty.
So that actually puts Bunbury Barbarians ahead on the penalty count for me now. We've got four penalties to the Barbarians and Arcs have given away three, so they did have an early advantage there. And and the referee says, I've given away three of those in pretty quick succession down here, so he asks him to have a chat to his team. Just says, better discipline, please. Don't want to be doing this all day. Maxwell Hall, better, better contact on that one, so he puts it about 12 metres out into the arcs, attacking 22. And it'll be Chapman Manuel for the throw, and it's brought down really well there by... Richard Swart, who's coming for the injured player, is cleans that up nicely. And it's a bit of a wrestling match going on there over that ruck, but Swart moves it to Gibbon, who ducks back inside. Big fend, but just runs into a wall of barbarians at the moment. Back on the release! Very hard to get past the gain line, but it's uh, Roll! Rowan Gill, big strong run there. And they're getting forward now through Chapman Manuel, and the big boys are rumbling up. They find themselves only five metres out here, Arcs at home, and this Arcs crowd starts to get a bit vocal, gives them a bit of encouragement, and slows it down a little bit there, and... Again, rumbling one off the ruck, and they've got a penalty advantage now, so do they continue with the same, or do they chance their arm? I think that was Rowan again with that one. Just short of the line here, and Troy Lauren. Another advantage offside there, and they, and they score the try, the arcs. Great patience, pays off after the multiple penalties by the Barbarians and they kept it in close with the big ball runners. And actually looks to be the, the hooker, Chapman. It looks to be the hooker, Chapman Manuel, who's scored the try there as we have a bit of a... Ooh, a strange, uh, bit of a strange pitch invader, invader there with a mini RV flying across the field out of control. Not really sure where that's coming from. Let's calm down, calm down. Just calm down. Calm down, calm down. Well, community rugby folks, uh, sometimes it's a dog running on the field, down. but uh, a bit of an interesting one with someone with a bit of a motorised RV. Hard to see where that's come from, but um, yeah, certainly some of the players and other people weren't happy about it. Uh, it's been cleaned up now and... Calm down. The referee must start doing a good job just to say. Yeah, he thinks it might have been something a bit out of control and not, not intentional there, so he's just having a chat to the players. But 22 minutes in, and Arcs um, strike back with a, a well worked try. They had a couple of cracks at it, but the penalty count against the Barbarians probably just proving a bit too much there, so. So we'll see Blair Gibbons' first attempt at a conversion and the potential to put the home team up by two points. And he's just hooked it a little bit to the left. So we're all tied up here at Harrisdale Pavilion. Bunbury Barbarians 5, Arcs 5. That's fine. I was going to say before that happened, you're on a formal invitation. So, 
It's 25 minutes into the first half by my clock, but we did have a lengthy stoppage there, so we'll see how much uh, referee Mostart gives back for that one. And it'll be Ratuki on the fly half to get us restarted here with the Barbarians. And it looks to go sort of deep down the middle, so that one's not contestable, and... Laurent kicks that one, and it's a, it's a bit of an aimless oh. kick right up the middle to the big uh, Vola Ono, and he's going to fancy a bit of a run there, and he busts past one tackle and no. cleans it up, and Villa Day, and now Nuu, and just throws a bit of a way with pass to Gura Berry there, and he can't help himself, puts a hand out, knocks the ball down, and the Barbarians knock on. Arks will have the ball. Just uh, just not really got into their rhythm yet. The Barbarians, you know, pushing a few passes. Um, certainly see they've got the players with the ability to shift the ball wide and play an expansive style of rugby, but it hasn't quite clicked for them in the early going and a couple of handling errors for them. So Arks will have the feed to the scrum here and Richard Swart, the replacement Hold your number nine or come on and feed that at scrum competition seems pretty pretty even early on there and now Kappa puts in a kick into the 22 which Bunbury recycles and puts in a, a great kick and it's the number 13 with a really good chase there, Isaac Harmer um Really good kick there, but Arks clean it up and have it pretty much on the halfway line. Swart looking for runners, tries a little inside ball there and doesn't really connect with the uh, running Anthony, big running Anthony Russell. They didn't connect on that one, so. There's there. Playing the knock on. So nothing eventuated from it and. Start. We'll say let's um, let's go back for a scrum. Arks, you knocked it on. Bumbry, you can have a crack at it. So I think that was the Anthony Russell there on that inside line. Just couldn't connect with the um, with the replacement halfback, Richard Swart. And the Barbarians get it out the back and it goes to Isaac Harmer. He moves it forward for the Barbarians and a little kick in behind by the, the number 12 and it's recycled by Arks and uh, I think that was uh, Sean Davis tried the kick and just got tackled as he was kicking the ball and might have injured himself here. But Bunbury Barbarians have the advantage now, and Ratuki flings it out wide. Vura Berry finds himself out the back there, number four, and he's got the ball again, and they hand it out. Bunbury Barbarians on the attack here. This is good move what? through the hands, nice and sweet, and they've broken through the tackle, and the winger, Sorova, comes away with the try. And a nice move there by the Bunbury Barbarians. They... They had the penalty advantage, and it was actually um, Vura Berry and the other second rower, Vula Ono, combining nicely there with a few offloads. And then once you break past the line, it was putting it through the hands of the backs, and Noah Sorova found himself with the ball. Still had a lot of work to do, to be fair, and but he showed a, showed a good set of wheels on him and finishes that one off under the post to put the Barbarians up in this game 30 minutes in to the first half so not too much longer to go here and that puts them up 10-5 with a conversion to come this one under the post so it shouldn't be too much of an issue for Rotuki As we 
see down there, Sean Davies looks to be coming off the field injured. Unfortunately, he cleaned the ball up nicely and went for a boot downfield and just sort of got caught awkwardly. And as he's coming off the field, the conversion's successful. By the Barbarians, so they now find themselves up. Twelve to five, with about five to play, depending on referee Mostard what he uh, what he thinks we're going to go further. But um, Blair Gibbons will get us underway with the restart. But it's a little bit of a chip kick put in there by. Barbarians and have a look at this run and just can't connect on the offload. Is that Vuraberi again? And now the that's the Tuavuna breaking past the line, pops it up for Ratuki to come through. And what a what a try by the Barbarians from the restart there. And these second rowers for the Barbarians have got some silky skills and love an offload. And that is a strike play, and that's a bit of a backbreaker for the Arcs just before half time to give up two quick tries. But I mentioned before about the Barbars not not sort of connecting in the first sort of 30 minutes of this game. Well, they've all of a sudden dialed it up, and two very impressive tries. One right off the restarts, and excellent running, excellent hands. Love a pop pass off the deck. You can see how dangerous they can be. So, Rituki, the try scorer, adds an extra two. Takes us out 19 to 5. So what do you do here if you're Blair Gibbons? You've gone deep and they made a bit of a mess off the the initial um, receipt of the kick, but then went 80 metres. So I think that's probably the right option this time. You want to make it contestable and and that's a, a actually a really great outcome for the Arcs. They tried the offload, the Barbarians, and the uh, big Rowan Keel, I think it was, running through there. Advantage over. And now they find themselves in the 22. Now they'll have a bit of a rumble and a great little step there from the Arcs players. They find themselves 10 metres out. They'd love to get another one back here as we enter the latter stages of this first half. Swart to Gibbon. To oh, and then to try the Arcs. Number 12, it's the captain, the first year captain, Kappa. He just showed a little bit of a step there, but great comeback from Arcs there after giving up two quick tries, made the kick contestable off the kickoff, recycled the ball, found themselves very quickly outside of their line, a couple of big carries, and then give it to the inside centre to go over and just letting the Barbarians know, hey, we can, we can throw it around a bit as well. And the last man speak. Okay. Start. I'm not going to say any of that was down to the okay, commentator, so you might but I did suggest that the uh, contestable time. restart might um, might produce a better result. So I'll be very happy with that. The uh, the home team. We'll see if Gibbons can knock it over from in front. The first one was a miss, but it was a little bit more difficult. Just off to the left. This one. Shouldn't provide too much of a challenge. And it doesn't. And he knocks it over. And referee Mostart says half time. So really good result there by the home team right before the break. Pulling themselves back into this one. Here at Harrisdale Pavilion, we have the home team arcs on 12. But it's the Bunbury Barbarians out in front 
by 19. Welcome back to Harrisdale Pavilion after that quick break for this FMG championship match between the home team Arcs and the league leaders Bunbury Barbarians. Um, pretty good uh, first half, I think there. Some, some really good tries from the Barbarians. They got us underway 15 minutes in with a try. Um, Arcs hit back on the 22nd minute. And then two very quick tries. One... Um, pretty much back-to-back -back by the Barbarians, put them out 19-5, to five, but then a very late try. They recycled the kickoff for Arcs. Gets them back into this one, 19-12. So it'll be interesting to see how this second half goes. And 
Rotuki will get us underway. And he puts that one long and down the middle. And that's... Darks try to clear that one and made a bit of a mess of it. So the Bunbury Barbarians will have a scrum pretty much 25 metres out or so, right in the middle of the field. That was Ashley Wilson who received the kickoff. He's one of the Arcs juniors. He looks to have slotted in at fullback. He's only 17 years of age, so um, great upcoming talent there coming through from the Arcs juniors. So the 17-year-old's out there. And from the Bunbury Barbarians, big number eight. Cavakini runs it off the back of the scrum and gets a good 10 metres off. And... The Bunbury here, pick and go off the scrum. Looks to be just short. We've got a couple of Arcs players down in backfield as well, which is not going to help things in terms of their defence. And number 23, Tuavuna gets another try. That's his second by my count. So the Bunbury Barbarians pretty much pick up right where they left off in the first half and score very quickly in this second. One minute 50 into the game. They put themselves out to 24 points. Here's to Avuna, got to the outside shoulder and drives over. the Barbarians a little bit further out in front with the kick now from Rotuki to come. Maxwell Hall was down for arcs, injured for a little bit, but he's popped up now, looks to be okay. They've had a few go down injured in this game, so hopefully they can Last a distance. And Rotuki tries a kick from out wide, five in, and misses that one to the left. So the league leading Barbarians, 24 points up to 12 now, and Arx will get us back underway. Really excited to be bringing you championship action on our Rugby WA YouTube channel. Next week, we'll be bringing you a women's premiership match, Southern Lions versus Wanneroo. So very excited. And I think I'll be calling that one with a Let's Chat legend, Dane Lazarus. So uh, tune in for that one next week if you want to watch some women's rugby. A few Super W players will be knocking around in that one as the Barbarians field the kickoff and have a run. And oh, that is an absolutely fantastic pass inside. And it's young Ashley Wilson who has to make the tackle on a barnstorming Cavakini and he pushes him out wide but it's a big ask to tackle that rampaging number eight Cavakini and he did well the young fella but that pass inside or sorry outside I should say by the Bunbury Barbarians by the uh, by Aiden Hanna it was wonderful pass to put the Cavakini in and he, he ran 60 metres to score that one so Great to see a big number eight in flight. And probably just need to tighten things up here a little bit, Arcs. It's, it's they've been sort of blown away a little bit here in the first four or five minutes of this second half. So they need to just refocus and sort of get back into their structures, maybe slow things down a little bit. Try and play some of the rugby down in their half as you can see here Rotuki probably only a shoelace in from the sideline
Well, there's no win to speak of, but he's maybe he's uh, brought the wrong tee today because he's having trouble getting the ball on the tee, but he's not had trouble kicking that one. And that is a fantastic kick from the sideline. And he's missed a couple, but they don't come much harder than that. So great conversion there. Puts it out to 31 with the successful conversion. So how can Arks respond here? Might suggest keeping the ball away from the Barbarians number eight. Kavakini because when he was running in flight, I don't think there's too many people in the state of WA that would want to tackle him. So keep the ball out of that man's hands, I'd say, as the Barbarians field the kickoff, bring the ball forward, and it's popped out the back and it's gone a little bit ugly. Um, and Peter Moss said, I think there's been a bit of a knock on there, so he's called for a scrum. Actually, the touchy said that there's a, a foot in touch there. So, Arks will actually have the line out. Chapman Manuel to, to throw this one in. And apart from one early uh, overthrow at the line out, the Arks line outs look pretty good, actually. And they set up the rolling mall here. And uh, most of the forwards come in for that one. And they'll have a little bit of a trundle. And they um, might be able to, it's pretty well set up. So, they might be able to chip away at some ground here. And this suits Arcs. I think if they're going to find their way back into this game, this is uh, definitely the way they want to go down. It's, it's pulled down now, and Swart, the replacement nine, has a little bit of a dart. And we have an acting half in there as the, one of the big front rowers for Arcs, but still got the ball here inside their 22, looking to hit back in this second half. And referee Mossad's got his arm out for a Barbarians player going off their, going off their feet, and... Oh, geez, a big, big Anthony Russell says, I can, I can run with the ball as well. He's a, he's a big guy and chips away. As pass outside now to Davis. And he does well to keep a hold of that one because the Barbarians' defence was rushing up. Gibbons switches the point of the attack. And a uh, very good tackle there, bringing big Rowan Keel from the arcs down. And they've actually pushed them back outside their 22. So... Really good defence there by the Barbarians. And Schwartz takes it quickly. and But referee Mostart says, no, I'm not going to give you that one. I don't think that was quite on the mark. Um, but good heads up play. And they come back for that penalty for the Barbarians player going going off their feet at the ruck. So, geez, I'd like to see Arks go for the go for the corner here, put it five out and get that rolling mall going. Because if they set it up like they did last time, they're in with a chance. Um, Looks to have some, some pretty good structure to it. So Maxwell Hall does just that. Kicks for the far sideline and Chapman Manuel will throw it in and we'll see if we can do the same. It's brought down well and they do exactly that. Um, but they don't, it shears off actually. They don't quite set up the mall and goes into open play. They've got a ruck form now as they look to pick and go from the ruck. Maybe about 10 metres out, they go to the blind side. And again, this Barbarian's defence has arcs going backwards. So Swart to Gibbons and give it to the big number 26 and it's actually the young sir Wilson gives it to Davies and Arcs score in the corner a great try there the youngster Ashley Wilson timed the pass Davies out in front of him and nice little try there by Arcs after they didn't get the rolling mall at the line out but well worked through the hands there of the backs and Sean Davies, one of the two Davies brothers. So, ten minutes into this second half, and Arks strike back with a five pointer of their own. 
to keep themselves in this, just keep it ticking away. And as I said, it's the um, young star, actually, Wilson, the 17-year-old. He's going to have a crack at knocking this one over from the sideline. And just misses that to the left. It was a bit of a bit of a low stinger. It certainly had the distance on it, and he hit it quite well. So he does have a boot on him. We'll have to keep keep an eye and watch him develop through the years, but it definitely could be one for the future as he goes back to the uh, fullback position. Barbarians will get things underway again and they go long with the kick into the arcs 22 and they exit there but got that one off the outside of the boot there. Um, Richard Swart, the number nine. Probably didn't get all he wanted on that one, just a little bit of a slice. So club captain Steve Hammer to throw in at the line out. Barbarians have got it's a four-man line out. And they go to the back. It's almost picked off by Arx. It's all a little bit messy, and it's a knock-on by the Barbarians. So Arx have a knock-on advantage here, and they're in possession of the ball. And they pick and go around the ruck. And Swart says, yep, keep working, fellas. Keep doing that. Keep doing what you're doing. And Chapman Manuel rumbles it forward. Gibbon now. Gives it to one of the big fellas running in there to soften up some of that Barbarians defence. That'd be uh, Joshua Maloney, I believe, the big, big fella in the 24 jersey. And they're slowing it down a little bit here, Arx. And Uribeiri... Rushed up there. I don't know if he's got him for offside, but uh, Arcs have a penalty advantage here. And they go inside with Anthony Russell. Choose off about five metres up the middle of the park. So that sort of in close running to the breakdown is um, with their big, strong ball runners, Arcs. It is getting him somewhere. Swart to Gibbon to, to Big Maloney again. He's obviously a fella they want to get the ball in his hands because he's going to be challenging to bring down. And Captain Kappa puts in a kick, but referee Mostard, he's been pretty generous there. He's given him a fair bit of advantage. So we're going to come back for their penalty. Um, they sort of got it up to the halfway line, then went back, put in a bit of a kick. So... Back, back, ten, captain, captain. It's a penalty. Back, ten. Thank you. Let's go, Let's go. Yes, Arcs have a penalty here, and a youngster, Ashley Wilson, will look to find touch, uh, which he does. Ten meters into the Barbarians' half, and the Arcs will have the line out. So 31-17, 15 minutes in to the Barbarians. And Chapman Manuel gives it to big Josh Maloney, who loves running with the ball in his hand. And But the Barbars have given away another penalty. Hands in the ruck there. So this could be a way back into the game for Arx. Just keep... Keep the ball in hand. Don't give it back to them because they're pretty dangerous with them, the Barbarians. But go a couple of phases. If they give away a penalty, get that rolling ball back into the game. They've, they've formed it a couple of times. So it's Maxwell Hall. It's a pretty good kick in, actually, from the middle of the field there. It's a I think that's Jordan Brown, actually, who's uh, put the kick in there. And 
believe the, the try was actually scored by Maxwell Hall. I think I credit it to uh, Sean Davies, but I don't want to take away a try from the Arcs number 13. So, and go to the line out, and they've um, didn't quite connect on that one, but the Barbarians have knocked it on, so they'll go to the scrum. And a little bit of lip there from the Barbarians, and referee Mostart says, well, you know what? If you give me a bit of back chat, I'll give the arcs 10 metres. So, was the fourth penalty, so I've got Barbarians at four penalties to zero in this half. So, as I said, this, this could be a way for arcs to get back into the game if, if the Barbarians start to sort of lose that discipline. Um, and as I said, here we go, another opportunity. They scored their try in a similar position in the second half with a penalty off the line out and they bring it down clearly and now they do set up that maul but it shears off to the left and rather than going the rolling maul it's been brought to ground and and they've gone the blind side with the pick and go and they have scored the try so they're well and truly back in this now the arcs And the line-out is certainly a weapon for this team. Ben Ockerden's obviously done a fair bit of work in training on getting that line-out running smoothly. And I think they've connected on most of them. I think I've got two misses, one early in the first half, and then a little miss there, but they got a knock-on from it. So, Arcs 22, Bunbury 31, seven min 17 minutes into this. So... Big kick here from Blair Gibbons to see if he can add an extra two and get them within seven points. So it's a pretty big kick, this one. Just doesn't have the legs on that one. So it stays Arcs 22, Barbarians 31. And if you're the Bunbury Barbarians head coach, um, Saya Futana, you might just be saying to the boys, just let's watch our discipline here because we're giving these Arcs guys a bit of a sniff every time we give away a penalty. But ball in hand, we look pretty crash hot. So tighten things up, get on the good side of the referee see this one out and they get things underway with Rutaki but that's well it was a bit of an awkward one it bounced inside the 10 nobody touched it and it got a very fortuitous bounce because it looked as though it was going to be an arc scrum but bounce of the ball means that arcs will have the line out here with Chapman Manuel He'll throw to the middle, and the arcs line out is true again, as it has, and they've set up, and it's Gary Nichol shearing away there in the number seven position, and chews off a few metres. Arcs have had a fair bit of uh, football in their hand these um, last sort of five, ten minutes, but as I said that, I've given them the commentator's curse, and they've copped it up, and Bota for the Bunbury Barbarian says, thank you very much. He won't score too many easier ones than that. It was just coughed up there by the Arcs backs. Absolute commentator's curse. And Botta for the Barbarians, the number seven, was ready to pounce. Picked it up like a flash. And man, these Barbarian players have all got a bit of gas about them. They're all quick. They've all got the silky hands. So... Anything like that will sure to be capitalised on. So we've picked a good one here on YouTube because we've had we've had a pretty high scoring game so far and there's plenty to go in this one. Another another fifteen minutes as Ratuki, the number ten, chips that one over, takes it out to thirty-eight points for the barbarians. 
as I said, the, the league leaders, the pace setters in this FMG Championship division. It's uh, top four finals. So the top two will host. A lot, long way to go before we get to semi-finals. It's a, a long old season culminating in the grand final, September the 2nd. And as you can hear by a few of the beer bottles behind me, the, the ARCS locals are, are getting into it on this beautiful day. And that's actually a really good restart there by ARCS and it's tapped back by the Barbarians, but really good contested restart there as Barbarians come away with it and geez the big barnstorm I think that's Nu'u for the Barbarians he's a, a big unit and now they give it again it's Kevin Kinney the number eight who's been all over this game he he's got number eight on his back but oh geez he can run like a winger he's got skills he's kicking the ball he's he's absolutely everywhere I reckon you could play him Probably anywhere from 8 to 15, the way he's playing today. He's chalked up a couple of tries, but it just didn't come off there, and he's he's knocked on. So we'll come back for a midfield scrum, and Ars can draw breath and get back into their structure, Let's see if they can get back into this game. It's certainly not out of their hands, a, a try would certainly bring it back again but they'll be wanting to strike pretty soon as Swart feeds the scrum the eight picks off goes to Swart out the back to Gibbon and, and he throws a bit of a, a pass in two minds there and it's, throws the ball into touch and just just doesn't come off there for Ark. He Gibbon looked in two minds looked as if he was going to Looks as if he was going to kick it, but actually um, the hit on Gibbon is deemed not to be legal because there's been no arms in it there by Hanare YT. So he gets sent to the bin for 10 minutes. And the penalty count mounting as well. So we've got a yellow card for Hanare YT, who hasn't been on the field for that long, for... Poor tackle technique there, he's... So just putting the yellow card graphic there on the, on the screen for you. So arcs with the penalty, bring it down. Line out's been good today and they've continued to recycle the ball. And it's big Jordan Brown makes a bar swimming run and it goes to Ashley Wilson who a bit under pressure puts a kick in but it's knocked on the, bar the Barbarians so given the outcome of the kick they'll probably take that one in the arcs and look to go again from the scrum. I mean they've, they've had a fair bit of possession arcs and uh, we don't have the stats but I'd, I'd, I'd guess they've actually be... Um, They'd, they'd have the lion's share of possession in this game and they've, they've gone through the phases. They've controlled the game at times, but this Barbarians team is... I mean, they're just so lethal, aren't they? You, anytime they've got ball in hand and they don't muck around, they get it through their hands. They've got great strike runners and there's one of them on the ground there. Um, Cavakini, number eight, seems to be injured. It'd be a real shame because he's been a bit of a rock star today. Understandably, a little bit ginger to get up because he's got through a mountain of work, but he looks to be okay to continue as arcs get the scrum feed. It's uh, that time in the game that the commentator needs to start thinking about who the man of the match is, and I think Cavakini's name is definitely in contention to Avuna with uh, two tries as well is uh, definitely worth a shout but plenty to go in this one and the arc scrum is dominant and they get the scrum penalty uh, particularly with the bum 
Bunbury Barbarians man in the bin. They get the scrum ascendancy and they get a penalty. So, as I said, the, the Barbarians are starting to climb up, particularly in the second half. First half penalty count was pretty even. And I think that might be a new penalty advantage by referee Mostert. So, Arcs will go back to this chipping away around the ruck. They've got... They've got big ball runners and they want to soften it up before they go wide. It's a bit of a wobbly old pass from Swart, but it's cleaned up by um, big Josh Maloney. And Mostard will say, nah, you've made a bit of a mess of that. So we'll, we'll come back for the penalty. As I said, I've actually got the penalty count at 7 to 0 in this second half against the Barbarians. So... As I said, the, the trendsetters in the uh, in this competition, but they may have a bit of an Achilles heel when it comes to discipline. So, opposition coaches take note. And I've been really impressed with this arc set piece. Actually, They've, here comes the uh, line out, and uh, Big Maloney gets the ball as well. They want to get the ball into his hand, and he's. Bit of an unorthodox, oh, it's intercepted. I was going to say an unorthodox pass. Big one-hander out the back, and Ashley Wilson does well. It, but it's cleaned up now by Tua Bororoa, and Ark scramble well, but they've gone the length of the field here, the Barbarians. And while it looked on for Arcs off the back of the line out, the intercept has meant that the Barbarians have gone almost the length of the field, but Arcs have actually done really well to turn it over here and win the penalty. But the intercept initially was by Tava Bula Bula, I think it was, with the, with the intercept, and we've got an Arcs player injured number 16 Tava Bula Bula got the intercept and then young uh, fullback Ashley Wilson did um, it did really well actually he just stayed in the passing lane so the two barbarians players couldn't connect and he he knocked it um, knocked it backwards it all got a bit messy cleaned up by arcs and then they've come away with it they got another penalty, so that's uh, now eight penalties against the Barbarians, but we get to have another look at this Arcs line out. Chapman Manuel. There's not many hookers that go the distance, but and the Barbarians throw a few early jumpers up there, but the Arcs line out, as it's been most of the day, is pretty strong. And they set up the rolling ball here and they start to chip away at it. And they win a penalty because the Barbarians players have not come into that legally. And Arcs have chipped off a good, good 10 metres with that rolling ball. So is a strength of theirs as it's, it's held up now. And they keep going with it at the back. I think that's Laurent at the back. And eventually it's brought down. Swart to Gibbon. Looking out the back now for the captain, Kapaya. And he, the rush up defence by the Barbarians, stops him in his track and will come back for the penalty at the mall. But geez, the two inside centres from both teams didn't like that one. Both fronting up to each other, but... So Arcs, yet again with the penalty, they kick, kick for touch through Jordan Brown in the green boots. They'll have a line out five metres into their attacking half, 20, 29th minute of this one. So time running out for Arcs here, but can they put another one on the board? It's Gibbon. And he goes out to the captain, Carpa, to the 
outside centre, Jordan Brown, but that's stopped in its tracks by the Barbarians. Swart to Gibbon. So Maloney, the big ball runner again. Swart comes this near side. Gibbon throws it out to Maxwell Hall. And that's Nooks. So it's Nooks in the green boot there. He's been the one kicking it. And Swart puts in the grubber kick in behind the Barbarians. A pretty decent kick, actually. So... But are we coming back for a penalty again? Okay, Captain. Penalty. I was playing for 17, not releasing. Hold the mark for me, yeah, please. Thank you. Here you go, 17. Captain. Barbarians not releasing. Three, three and again. 17, off you go. Thank you. And then number 17 gets told to. He's got one and a half to go. Take another break because that's the 10th penalty of this second half Beautiful. by the Barbarians. So they're actually down two men with about a minute and a half left on that yellow card. And arcs. Kick for touch, and we'll have the line out on their attack at 22. Finding themselves two men up. So, do they go back to that rolling wall that's been working so well for them, or do they use that numerical advantage out the back? Well, throws it in straight. He's been good all day, and they've got another penalty advantage here. So. Discipline an issue for the Barbarians in this second half. And the arcs rumble up here about 10 metres out on the right side. They pick and go, and another penalty advantage. It's an offside advantage there, and arcs will throw. So, Gibbon to Anthony Russell. Through the middle here. And Barbarians player finds himself over the top of that, and that is a legal turnover. So, referee Mostart will bring it back for the penalty. And Gary Nickel takes a quick tap, the number seven. It says, We need to get back into this one, so let's hurry up. And Arcs find themselves about five meters out, and another penalty advantage. And I'm running out of space on my penalty column here for tallying all these Bunbury Barbarian penalties. So, Arcs have the numerical advantage and they pick and go from the rocket, but it goes sideways. And Swart to Gibbon, steps inside to tackle him. And, and the big number eight, a great offload there. Troy Lauren beats the first tackle and Offloads really nicely to, I believe it might have been the club captain, it was, um, the first year captain, Kappa, but a really nice little line there by Troy Lauren and then got his arms free and popped a pass around the corner, so arcs 27. Bunbury Barbarians 38 and the conversion is successful so it takes them within nine with two minutes to go so it might just be a little bit too big of an ask to come back in but a bit of bonus points on if they can get within seven and I think they've shown a real good account of themselves um, in this game arcs here at home they've played some good rugby they've certainly been strong in the line outs against the league leader barbarians who have really lost their way with discipline in this second half but they got out to a big enough lead that it didn't cost them in the end but i think after a, a big loss against mandra two rounds ago arcs have acquitted themselves really well today as uh, nooks with the green boots, has a big, strong driving run up the middle and takes arcs 25 metres out for their trial line. And Troy Laurent, who 
helped with that try, takes the ball forward. And give it to, oh, a big rush up tackle there and a big hit, big, big Josh Maloney rolled off one, but, and oh, here's a great run from Arkson. Have, have a look at this run and oh, a great tackle there. Illegal though, okay. lifting the player off the ground. May, maybe just a penalty, but Arx just moving into fifth gear in the latter stages of this game. But a great line break, great footwork by Cody Davis, it might, might have been. Uh, Troy Laurent, here we go. That's Gary Nickel, and he tries to put the pass out to. <laughs> Cody Davis, but it was knocked on in the tackle. Number and referee Peter Mostart, he sends the number 10, Ratsuki, to the bin for lifting the player beyond the horizontal. And then the referee Mostart says, and you're giving me too much chat about it, so Arx can have another 10 metres. So... So... I think we had the earlier yellow cards return, but now with Ratuki, the fly half in the bin, Barbarians still find themselves two men down as we've ticked over 35 minutes. So we're in referee Mostart's time now. Can Arx get the bonus point and help keep them in touch in a, a very competitive division? They go to the rolling... Mall off the line out and it's brought down illegally. So a fair bit of yelling and shouting going through that ruck. It's a bit of a wrestling match, but Arx, well, no, they don't have the ball. The Barbarians have come up big there and they've turned it over. Ceiling off number six. That's number six from Arx. Late to the ceiling off. I think that may actually have been. The first penalty of the second half for Arx, but the kick to touch calls an end to this one, and the league leaders, Bunbury Barbarians, are victorious 38 points to 29. They gave Arx a sniff towards the end there, particularly some uh, discipline issues, but they got far enough out in front that it wasn't an issue in the end, and they will remain on top of the 2023 FMG Championship ladder. My name's been Jason Marable. Thank you for joining us down here at Ar um, Harrisdale Pavilion, home of the Arcs. We look forward to seeing you next week when we have a YouTube match. It's the Women's Premiership. We've got Wanneroo versus Southern Lions, so make sure you tune in for that one.